what's going on guys we got a pretty simple project tonight all right so i'll give you guys a look at what we got here so we got these base plates here they're a five by five base plate quarter inch holes and there's nine of these we got to build and i'm not really exactly sure what they are but the contractor sent me a sketch on what he needs he needs nine of them so we're going to go ahead we'll burn these base plates and then we've got to do a 90 leg it's inch and a half square tube we'll go ahead and start cutting material cutting our parts and then i'll give you guys a better look at what we got so let's get after it so we got those all cut out so we'll go ahead and get these over on the table clean them up and then we're gonna start getting our tube cut so we'll show you guys what we got over there okay so I'm gonna kind of give you guys an idea on what this part looks like stand by so I want to show you guys what the design looks like it's a pretty simple part so the base plate is right here piece of tube coming up 45 so this is on a 90 14 inches here 13 and a half from the bottom of the base plate to the miter cut so that's what the parts are going to look like pretty simple part but i do have some rather exciting news though there is a new tool in the shop this is the newest member of the freedom fab family this is our mitering evolution metal saw and if you've never used one of these saws they are amazing so we're going to use this saw to cut our tube for lighter gauge tube like this these things are amazing they cut through steel like butter so we're going to go ahead and get our tube in here we'll start cutting our pieces see if we can't get these cut out so we can start fitting this stuff it's time for today's super cool tool guys so for today's super cool tool we're going to be talking about this evolution miter saw the model number on this saw is the s355 mcs i'm assuming the mcs stands for miter cutting saw it does have a 14 inch blade it is fairly heavy it weighs probably 40 or 50 pounds so first let's go over the functions of the saw so i'll just walk through everything with you guys and we'll talk about what the functions are of the saw okay the saw comes with two of these nifty little clamps and they got a quick release thing here that's pretty handy you just flip that out of the way and then you can pull that out of the way flip that over and then you can lock this down this clamp has a quick release as well but it's a button you just push that button and it'll lift out of the way. You can also just push down on this and it will go down and then you can lock it in. Pretty handy. There are different uh, settings. There are different places you can set this. So it gives you lots of options on where you can lock your material down. There are holes on both sides. It does have this bar here and that is where these slide up and down pretty handy I like the way that's set up as far as the mitering goes you've got 0 to 45 degrees in both directions and you can see there's a needle right there that tells you where you're at I am very impressed with how smooth there's zero slop there's zero lash it is very tight I am impressed with that Another cool feature with the saw is this locks in. So it's not really a slider. It doesn't work like a wood miter saw where it slides. So it does slide, but it's got settings. You're not supposed to just leave this unlocked and use the saw like you would with wood. Like you would with wood. Huh. So what you're supposed to do is this pin is spring loaded and you slide it until it locks in. 
so it just clicked in and then you lock this down so there are I believe three different settings and so far I've kept it in the middle and it's been right where I need it the parts are very high quality this is actually like cast aluminum or something it is some sort of metal it's not plastic I'm very impressed with the craftsmanship that's supposed to be closed you can see there's kind of a shield there this is your lock button for when you change the blade you can drop the saw that locks the head in the down position so that when you're transporting it it's a little bit less cumbersome there is a tool to change the blade on the saw so these brackets here can slide onto the clamps and then if you're cutting square tube like two inch square tube you can actually slide that in and it locks it in like that so that when you cut this actually puts the least amount of stress on the blade you're starting on a very small section of the steel and then it gradually gets wider it is a lot harder on the blade if you start flat like so but where I'm doing miter cuts like this that need to be flat you don't have a choice that's just the way it is so that's pretty nifty you can see that this blade here is just the regular steel blade they do make a stainless steel blade and a thin steel blade and I would assume that the tooth pitch on it is different the tabletop is machined so that it is a perfectly flat surface so I'm just I'm really impressed with it uh, the things I really like about it are I'm able to set it up and I cut these parts in a matter of 30 minutes last night saves me a lot of time I like that cutting miter cuts it is extremely accurate and there is a way that you can adjust your zero so you can get it right on the money I like that you can clamp your material down everything's secure it's got a lot of neat features it's very user friendly I like that it's portable for example one of the jobs that I've been doing lately with handrail this has really come in handy I can take it on the job site and I can use it to make miter cuts and it's just a lot quicker it's clean there's not a whole lot of cleanup to your cuts so those are the things that I like about it now let's talk about the negatives real quick I would say the negatives are number one it is extremely messy you can see the metal shavings are fairly coarse but it does throw them everywhere I mean this this is from this mess right here is just from cutting these parts so it is extremely messy one of the other negatives to this saw is it is extremely noisy you definitely want to make sure you have earplugs in you definitely want to make sure you have safety glasses on because you can see what kind of mess it makes I don't think that I would say that the price point is a negative because I do think it's worth what I paid I paid $8.50 for this saw I ordered it straight from Evolution and it showed up at my doorstep two days later it's been a fantastic saw and I definitely think this is a tool that's gonna help us out in the shop so I've been extremely impressed with it get on Evolution's website check them out there's multiple videos on YouTube where people review this saw I've contemplated getting one of these for a while but when I found out they had just come out with a miter saw, I waited. I wanted to wait for the right project before I purchased the saw. And it just so happened that I had a project going where I needed the saw. In my opinion, you're better off saving the money and paying the extra money for the miter saw. It does more. It does the same thing that the other model does. But with the miter capability, it's just so much more capable than the other and the miter cuts are extremely accurate so go ahead and check out the evolution miter saw for you guys that can't afford a full-size bandsaw or don't have the room for one this is definitely something you may want to look into so that's going to wrap up today's super cool tool let's get back to the project
Okay, so we got all our parts cut. These are our 13 and 8 inchers and our 14 inchers. And we got our base plates ready. We just got to clean them up a little bit. So that should be all the parts we need. Um, we'll get these all cleaned up tomorrow. It's just about 9 o'clock, so I'm going to call her quits tonight, go in and eat some dinner. And we'll catch up with you guys on this one tomorrow. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get these parts cleaned up. There's not a whole lot of cleanup that needs done with that saw. Pretty nice cuts. Uh, we just need to bevel them, get them all prepped up so that we can tack them together, fit them, weld them out. So let's go into warp mode and see if we can't get these knocked out. Just like the street lights lit this town Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to live this out We got this far, don't know how Alright guys, so we got our parts all tacked up here. I've checked them all. I went ahead and pulled the tape on each and every one of them to make sure they were consistent and they were within spec, which they are. So now I gotta go through and weld these out. So when I weld something like this out, usually what I like to do is weld these first and then I'll weld these. The reason I do that is if I start here, there's a chance that that's gonna pull together. If I start here, there's a chance it's going to pull this way. So if I weld these ones first, it's a lot harder for that to warp this way than it is to warp this way. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get these welded out. I just wanted to throw that out there. Sometimes with parts like this, you got to think about what order you're going to weld them. If you don't, it can usually end up biting you. So we'll go back to warp mode. Let's do it. going on guys we're back after it tonight give you an update real quick I did get these all cleaned up these are structural they're not ornamental so I'm not gonna buff the welds flat on the sides but I do like to kind of clean up the corners I just think it looks better I usually always leave the inside weld so we got these all cleaned up this is what we're after here so I do have this one welded out it's a five by five base plate, quarter inch holes. They're gonna use quarter inch fasteners. That's the part we're after. So we'll go in time lapse mode and we'll go ahead and knock these out. It is a little bit of a tedious process fitting them just because I'm trying to make sure that they're level both ways. In case you're wondering, these do get hidden in a wall, but I do believe this piece comes out and there's a park bench that actually mounts to this. That's what the contractor told me. This is their design, so I'm just building it how they want it. So we'll go ahead and get these knocked out and then we'll give you guys a look.
here is our stack of parts. They're all cleaned up. Gonna have to deliver those to the customer on Saturday, but they're done. So that's gonna wrap up another one. Hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more of this guy out here helping us. He's getting pretty good, if I do say so myself. He's been practicing. He was running these last night. So he's he's getting there. Still got some still got some things he can work on, but he's getting there. And had him over there practicing cutting up some parts with a grinder. So most of the guys I know that are really good at fabrication are really good with a grinder. He's been working on it. Anyway, it's gonna wrap it up. Appreciate you guys watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you on the next one. Flip that out of the way. Wow, that's nice. And I ordered it straight from Ever. I definitely think that this is a tool that is going to really help us out here in the shop. I, I definitely, and I just waited for the right time, the right time. I wanted to wait till, goodness. This, this here was a really good one for us to add to our tool arsenal. This here was a very good tool to add to our arsenal. I've been experiment. It's time to end the video. So check out the evolution. So check out the evolution miter saw. This is definitely one that's gonna, goodness.